out to my wonderful listeners. One family TV, all the most amazing and cutting. My dear, I have met your mama, Dr. Shabali, the former UDP campaign manager. I tell you, my dear, I'm so happy I'm with you. Can't stand you, I'm funding your mama, my dear, I'm so happy. I'm not a fan of the political conundrum. I'm not a fan of the funding your kids, fan of the political conundrum. Mama, Dr. Shabali, I'm not a fan of the idea of the conundrum. The audio is not loud enough. My dear, I'm so happy I'm with you. I'm not a fan of the conundrum. I'm not a fan of the conundrum. My dear, I'm so happy I'm with you. I tell you, my president, I'm not a fan. Rola advice ni nti de mbadi ngolo de mbwa audio ni natla na mea lungo na alamu ya ning haki rola mbadi ngolo kana alamu ya ning chuo. Aulu bidhaa mina shaitani rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahu masalli wa sallim ala sijidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us Al-Furqan so that he may be to all of us a warner. I salute you all with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And I am honored to be here at Al-Furqan University. I actually love the name. I've been following this camp. You've not been seeing me, but I've been seeing you all along. And I just love the name Al Furqan because it's uh, the word itself is uh, it's a mountain of Ikma. Uh, to have Muslim youths come together in a camp is a blessing for the Ummah. And I must thank my brother and friend, Ibrahim Prespa, whom I henceforth call him Ibrahim Muftiba. Since we were, we were doing Islamic camps now. But, uh, it's good that Muslims approach things with an Islamic perspective. Uh, I organize my own camps. We have the Cyber Leadership Academy Youth Camp. I, 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 I attend a thousand and one camps. But for Muslim youth to come together in an Islamic youth camp, I think it's important because Islam has its own philosophy and its own way of approaching all issues. Our religion, as one of my ustazes taught me a couple of decades ago, when I was primary in primary school, he says the Islamic religion is not confined to worshiping only. It is culture, education, and cultivation it educates man and also cultivates him and guides him towards the goal. It's an all, how do they call it to this thing? All inclusive. <laughs> it's an all inclusive philosophy. It's a way, a guide to life. And I'm glad that you're asking me to talk about the role of young people, opportunities and challenges for Muslim youth in politics. Because, this, by the way, what is politics? Any volunteer? What is politics? Nobody knows what politics is. Press. Then I think I can go home because I cannot talk to them about their role in something that they don't know about. <laughs> so it, it, it's quite interesting that some of the things we deal with and talk about every day, if you ask us to define them, it might be difficult. I am not sure I even know what's the exact definition of politics, but I'm a politician and I love politics. But it is important that we approach issues with knowledge, because ours is a religion based on knowledge. Even though sometimes we are unfortunate to be represented or for people to claim to be representing us who are all about emotion. This is not a religion about emotion. A religion whose first instruction is to go and read. And I love your theme. Knowledge, networking, and what is the third one? Voluntarism. This is all about knowledge. So we need to know the things we are dealing with so that we deal with them with wisdom not just emotion. 
Like I said, uh, I don't even have a working definition of politics. But before I came, I did my own little findings and tried to pick a particular de definition from the Encyclopedia Britannica. And I did that so that you can also say that I'm smart. Because if I just say a dictionary, that would not sound very complex, would it? If I say Encyclopedia Britannica, you say, eh, what is I I'm I'm serious. So, <laughs> don't laugh. This is a very serious matter. I hope you don't have, I don't have, I hope you don't have Sarapulis here, because they, they like to pick on me, these Sony Kara people. You are here, you are not even ashamed of saying it. <laughs> so the Encyclopedia Britannica, like I said, <laughs> it says politics is activities that relate to influencing the actions and policies of a government or getting and keeping power in a government. This is very interesting. It says what? Activities that relate to influencing the actions and policies of a government, or getting and keeping power in a government. Do you think it's appropriate for Muslims to be, Muslim youth to be involved in this? How many of you think it's appropriate for Muslim youth? Why? Because? Yeah, yes. Why? It's easier? Good. Because what governments do affects you, affects both your worldly life and your life in the hereafter. So it is everybody's business to be involved in politics, but I think it is fundamentally the business of Muslim youths to make sure they are involved in politics. Because the government that rules you the political system that obtains in a place decides the do's and the don'ts of that land. The politicians, they make the laws, they enforce them. So if you're living within that geographic entity, it is important that you participate in processes that will determine, you know, in, in this country here, there are certain things we take for granted that other people in other dispensations cultures and communities that were even in Islam before our part of this world, there are certain things that they cannot do. To think that you can, as an imam, you can go to your mosque and deliver your khutbah anywhere how you like it without anybody coming to check what you are saying. In some countries you cannot do it. There are, there are places where you can't wear a veil, even though it is your democratic right. Forget about Islam to start with. How people dress is their rights. But in some countries, you are not allowed to cover up whilst you are free to expose your nakedness. What creates it? Politics and the political systems that obtain in those systems. So it's very important that you take politics seriously. If I say that, that doesn't mean that everybody has to be a president or a minister or a whatever, national. It doesn't have to be that way. But you need to be involved in the conversation when it's time for your voice to be heard, and by voice I mean the most important voice you have in the political system is your vote. To make sure you vote for people and organizations that will make life easier for you, not just life in terms of how to obtain the material gains of this world, but also to be able to practice your deed for the hereafter, which is even better and more worthy of being worried about. So your politics and political systems will affect, I said, your life here and also where? In the hereafter. And you are citizens of a country and it is within that country that the politicians decide which direction your country will go. So if you are a citizen of a country and you care about that country, you should care about who decides your fate. And if you read our glorious book, which has the keys to all the doors and the solutions to all the problems, you will not be in doubt. If Allah tells us in the Quran, لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت هل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد. 
These oaths in the Quran, they are not for naught. They are there for a purpose. If Allah takes an oath about something, that thing is very so citizenship is very important. Whether it's in Makkah or Medina or Athens or Rome. The fact that you are a citizen of a place is important. And I dare say, since we are in the era of constitutional thinking and citizenship is one of the keys we are discussing about, I think for a person to be a citizen of any geopolitical entity, that person needs to have deep connecting roots to that place. Not just lousy, cheeky, Twitter space democracy, everybody has a right. You have rights. You want to know your responsibility before you assign those rights. There is a connection. This Quran is not disjointed. There is a whole sense of how the ayahs, the sequence of how the ayahs come. Allah is talking about a place of citizen. He's talking about the parent and the child. I will always go for citizenship to be connected with parenthood. If you ask me, your parents should be Gambian, you can be a Gambian automatically. Other ways could be uh, uh, devised, perhaps, to mitigate because no law is perfect. But I think citizen is more than you've got to have a connection with that place where you want to be a citizen. It cannot be automatic. I'm totally against that. So if your Quran tells you that citizenship is important, you are within that country. So don't you be interested in how that country is governed? You should be. So as Muslim youths, we need to be engaged in the politics of our land and i kind of pause when i ask you what politics means because it's a word that has been dirtied d-i-r-t-i-e-d i'm using the word they made it dirty politics is not dirty you know politics in itself is not bad and that's why he is involved in it and he has the right I get it when it says right. It's important. I know sometimes it gets ugly, but for even football, sometimes it gets ugly. You remember when Zidane went and head voted it in Matarazi or something? Everything has its bad side. You know. Even religious groups fight sometimes. So if politicians fight and slander each other, okay, we will not endorse it, but that doesn't mean polit make politics bad. It is those people at that moment who decided to be bad in their politics, but politics is not bad. And if we are in a country where we elect people who go to national assemblies, I'm not going to go into the substance of the extant debates, but you have deputies who go to the national assembly and they have to vote for laws and against laws, you better make sure you have deputies who are there to make sure that your economy grows, your society is secure, but also you are free to practice your religion, that your rights to worship Allah are not restricted just by a few people. You should not allow that. And that's why I'm told one of the renowned Muslim scholars, Sheikh Jalusi, may Allah bless his soul, at some point back then, I guess in the evolution of our democracy, he said, Muslims should also have uh, somebody in that house. You know, some of these scholars, they believe that uh, there's places where politicians are, there is no truth there. <laughs> Why he said, No, give me a car, yeah, and I'm on the other phone, and you go for a la, la, and that's important. I think it is, I think I speak my English, it may sound funny. And he may like, you go to go to the other one, la, la, man, so voila. It's important for people to be heard. And that's what my slogan, which has been misinterpreted, deals with. You can't cage me. People should not be caged. People should be able to speak their voice. I think we should be able to speak our, our, our local languages in the halls of that National Assembly. I think it should be. If we really care about democracy and effective re representation of people, if democracy is supposed to be a government of the people for the people and by the people, then the people will be supposed to be able to speak their languages in the chambers that define that democratic space in the National Assembly. I think we need that. In the meantime, just make sure you get a good Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary, at least to make sure you understand what goes on in the chambers of that house. I believe that Muslim youths should be actively engaged in politics, but as Muslim youths, we also need to be aware of the challenges and the pitfalls 
where certain individuals and entities have misrepresented our religion and misused and abused our religion for pecuniary, for pecuniary mundane gains. Certain groups calling that say Islamic this, Islamic that. They are not interested in Islam. They want political power. They want money. So be that as we it may, we always say, okay, they are extremists, they don't represent us, but they've created a certain view, a certain perspective of what our religion means. So it is the responsibility of you, the youth, because you are the one in social media, you are the ones who are going into politics, to make sure you represent this religion properly. And again, for the sake of clarity, if I am saying Muslim you should go into politics, I don't necessarily, listen to me carefully, I choose my words well then. I do not come up with Sajim Wang Narunina and Babla and Kareafo. I still stand by it because I choose my words well. I don't necessarily mean that you should have an Islamic party to be able to participate in politics. No, you don't have to. And a particular political party does not have to be perfect or have the sign of the star and the moon for you to join it. No, we live in an imperfect world and we are not living in an Islamic state. Gambia is not a Sharia state, even though we are majority Muslim. We are ruled by a constitution that is connected to English common law. But Alhamdulillah, even our court system recognizes our religious uh, 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 jurisprudence at some level. And that, that's a huge blessing. So you, your, your political participation doesn't have to be determined by a party being one of the Islamic party. Or you can participate, you have your values. And for me, MashaAllah, Tabarakawala, our these cultural religious values are generally acceptable in, in, in their democratic ethos. And that's why sometimes for me, even if you have to fight for your Islamic rights, don't even push the Islamic agenda. Just say that, like, for instance, a particular girl is asked not to dress a particular way to go someplace in this country. You say, the constitution gives me the right. Don't even go into Islam. You don't have to put any ayat for them because they don't believe in it. Why do you have to go give gold to a pig? Gold is important, but the pig does not care about gold. Just talk to them through the language, through the, 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 the logic that they understand. And <laughs> there is an operative instruction in our, in our Quran. We have all the solutions with us. But sometimes some of us, and again, I agree, they are in the minority in the fringes, but the non bubos should be enemy. You condemning people, sending them to hellfire. Do you have the keys to hellfire? You don't. You don't even know whether you are going to heaven. There are only a few who are guaranteed, uh, Chef Dudu, right? Only a few. There's no ceremony in that list. <laughs> so be careful what you say in the public space. What you may be able to say in your little kabudu, in your, in your attire, don't bring that into the public space because your audience matters. And as Muslim youth, we need to be aware about that some people are scared whenever they see the veil or they hear a part of the Quran. And that didn't happen overnight. There's certain things that happen and happen and happen. And that's perhaps partly because the right people from our ummah who are supposed to be engaged in leadership, they are not. I believe, like I said, I, I don't think we necessarily have to have an Islamic state with a Sharia law to be able to live an Islamic lifestyle. But I believe that there is a need for that model state run on Islamic principles. I yearn for that republic that embodies and radiates the best of Islamic state craft. For me, the closest, closest models I see that I really admire, majority Muslim, led by Muslim, you know, performing macroeconomically, performing in terms of governance, and then maintaining your Islamic ethos, Malaysia, the Emirates, Turkey, despite their shortcomings. There are some examples, I don't think they are perfect, but I'm looking forward to that model Islamic state, truly democratic, truly progressive, truly anchored on Islamic principles, and truly and correctly respecting the rights of minorities of other faiths because this is what our Islam has always been. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Medina. He lived with Christians, he lived with 
Jews. Salahuddin al Ayyubi, if you look at his history, when other people persecuted and killed Muslims and he conquered those men, did he go and kill them like flies? No. Our religion has always respected the rights and privileges of minorities, of people who don't believe like we do. We've always coexisted with them. And if there is a good example of that in the whole world, I don't think there is a better country like the Republic of the Gambia. Majority Muslim living peacefully and harmonic, harmoniously with Christians and people of other faith, and we need to preserve this. I know there are some voices who try to make it look like Muslims don't respect or don't want to coexist with other religions. It's a lie. I personally, I believe you don't have a religious problem in this country. Muslim, Christian, prophet, I don't believe it. But you will have individual fringes here who would overstep their bounds, go and do, but that does not represent us. Recently, I was in a school, all you know. The principal is a Christian, Manjaro. He's building a mosque in that school. So if one little school try to oppress one little girl in one little corner, let's try to deal with it, but let's not try to universalize it to say that this other religion does not. No, let's, let's not do it. These little problems here and there, let's try to see, uh, let's try to solve them with hikmah. My challenge to all of you is to start thinking more seriously about your civic responsibilities. And it's not just voting and participating in politics. It's about cleaning the streets. It's about taking off those harmful elements from the road that we are told is what sadaqa. Our motivation should be higher than others. And that is why when even others are trying to oppress us, we should rise higher. There is no but no human being who would tread seriously and sincerely on the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you will have other people succeed in painting you as a bad guy. The neighbor, the old woman, was throwing trash at him when the old woman was saying, what did, what did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He said, ah, I've not suffered from this woman for quite a while. Let me go and visit. How many of us are that big? Because your, for me, your humility is your bigness. That's what makes you great. That's what Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi the greatest human being to ever live on planet Earth. Let us learn from him. Let us not just quote this ahadith from Bukhari and Muslim and uh, just follow one uh, Google share and copy and paste. Let's try to live like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَمَةٌ بِمَنْ كَانَ يَعْدُ اللَّهَ وَلِعُمَلُ wa وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا We need to remember Allah. And that will be my concluding point in all of this. To remember that we are created here for a purpose. We are the Hulafa. We represent God here. We are created to worship him, but that worship is not confined in the mosque alone. We can worship by being active, proactive, kind, compassionate, productive citizens of our society. That not only would go to politics and vote and ask people to vote, but whose behavior will inspire people to come and join the political parties and platforms they belong, and the positions they take, because they know that these people will not belong to parties or be on platforms that will hurt anybody, whatever they do, wherever they are, is going to be for the higher of the ummah, of humanity, if I may say that. Let us trade that path. Like I said, and, I, and I'm emphasizing this, if I say Muslim youths get in politics, I don't want to go to standard to go and see al and political party. Please don't do it. There are existing political parties, you and join them. You know, I don't have time, I need to get back to office, but I wanted to start a thesis here about the difficulties we're having in this country in terms of leadership, leadership, this leadership, that. We don't have a leadership problem in this country. Quote me, in the Rabbi, we don't have a leadership problem in this country. What we have is a followership problem in this country. Too many chiefs and too few villages. More people they kill a president of the Lunkin and the Kellan. More people they kill a dictatorship. More people they end the owners of the William Batandi. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had followers, great followers that made him a great leader. 
Ihad Umar radhiyallahu anhu, Ihad Uthman radhiyallahu anhu, Ihad Ali radhiyallahu anhu. Ia, you name them, his companions, his companions that supported him. Ninyin jamaan ulem Umar bapa pun sendiri, Umar bapa Ali bapa sendiri, Uthman bapa. Tapi boleh mesti dia lihat. Ata kela no. Move me away from the religious realm because you will soon accuse me of uh, saying things that can be tafsir. In America, Martin Luther King Jr., I have a dream. He had Andrew Young. He had all of these people, leaders in their own, but they followed him. So we had only one civil rights movement. But in the country, you've never even learned a nursery school. You've never been a coach for a football team. You want to be a player? Coco will. Um, but we learn can take it. I will not be able to carry the logo and the nomination. It will be fun. At a kela no. Allah Taala says, "Nala." This is not a joke. I mean, I have, an, I have, a, I have a youth leadership foundation. It's called Summer Leadership Academy. Leadership. It was after that that all these leadership academies they copied this from me. The Summer Leadership Academy, SLA. But my leadership. It's not about every Sarahule being at Alcalo every village because the Sarahules don't have many villages. Paul says, Sonyo Malfana. In Ila Kumbe, who can watch me cool, I have to be fair to them. I think they are good followers. In fact, they follow my boss, President Baro. Thank you. Keep following me. Don't create another party. But my leadership in the Saba Leadership Academy is inspired by a hadith. Muka Kuke Kensenke. Kulukum Rai. Pama Kekila Lokumotika. But does that mean you are a leader of yourself to start with? If you cannot lead yourself, can you lead a community? You can't. Alma Soma Sabarin of Bulano no market, you are a side bulti. Naka Kora to follow Janet Sekino Alpha. Do you want to bump off from the political community? Do you have me going in this country? I think soon we should have a constitution that should pass than even politics. Because one. Top African journalist told me this. He said, There's too much politics in your big country. In your big country. Because Gambia is less than a local government area in Lagos. How many presidential candidates do? So I said, I am saying, We don't have a leadership problem in this country. We have a followership problem. Molmanson Nakela Koreoti, Molmanson Nakarana, Molmanson Sabarla. Everybody, you want to be a leader tomorrow. You want to solve the problems of this whole country. <laughs> When you're gonna solve the problems in your own room, you will take a lot of money and why send it? The people that are bankable are not going to go. I'm not going to know anything. I'm going to alone political corner. I'll all dark political talk. I'll I'll all dark again. And you can put bankable says Sabatino. Two of you are in Kilimo. Can go in the Dino. Can go in the Dunia. Balu se kumwa nyama. But in Kana, political football, the government says the Dino. Kola ya Dino ya Kenya. In Kana, na ala boto ke no Kana songala. Saya ngomong tara kirim barang sesuatu yang boleh dek. So we should not take these things for granted because what's happening in this world, especially this there's this whole I don't know how I wrote it in my notes. I think I like the way I wrote it. So let me check. Let me check. I have to read this for you. Okay, let me see. Okay, I didn't see. But what I was saying is. There are movements and organizations that are manipulating citizens and countries into behaviors that are against the law of God and humanity. And how they do it? They use the political chambers. They come to the National Assembly and they legislate. They go to your Ministry of Education and change your curriculum so that your child can be taught that a man and a woman man can get married. A lot of people don't know that. But you don't know if you don't have the right politicians leading you in the executive, in the legislature, I swear, now we give you 10 years from now, your child will go to school and they will force your child to learn that a man and a man can be uh, married, a man can be a mother. In other countries, they are teaching it. And if you are living in that country, you don't have a choice, your child has to learn. Allah Akbar. This is what is happening. But we can prevent that by being positive, responsible, measured, active participants in our politics to make sure our politics and political leaders reflect our cultural and religious norms and values. For me, if there is any motivation for you to get in politics, this should be it. There is a tsunami coming. We need to bring friends our beautiful smiling coast of Africa. Above all, my good Sheikh, Sheikh Omar Bungyeng. He, I like this anecdote from him. He said a particular Charlie was graduating from this chef's madrasa 
And he said, told the chef, can you give me some advice? I am going. And the chef told him, I'm not giving you any advice. You've learned the Quran from Baqarah to Nas. You've learned the Ahadi. The advice is what Allah told you. And that is my advice to you in politics, in academics, in professionalism, even in books. It's a timeless wisdom that you can carry on for the rest of your life and it will guide you into Jannatul Firdaus. Now the problem is when the Sarabulis we are teaching of the Badi Kuntas, they say itakulla wa sila alala. Do for itakulla muda ma wumu wa jama jiga sila alala. Some double alamu sarapun ki badu to duko baba mu mistake of bam I get a guy in the anime. Silo be yield. But for me the operative word and the Arabic language is very deep. I don't venture into tafsir. Because in Bam Dara and so why when we talk about taqwa. It's also fear be jailed. I'm not dismissing the Sarahule tafsir completely, but also for me, essentially to be conscious of Allah. Whatever you do, whichever decision you take, whichever path you take, be conscious of Allah and know that that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who's brought us this Quran, is going to judge our actions. I'll conclude by reading the full ayah because I think it is so powerful from from the beginning to the end, uh, and after that. I will thank you and take my leave because I have to go to the office that pays for my bills. Otherwise, I cannot buy the basmati rice for my pension. But this is the ayah, and interestingly, you should be proud of yourself. It's from Surah Misa. You guys are a blessing. Even for me, one of the most important is from your surah. Surah Misa. Which surah is Surah Misa? I've been looking for it. You get very problem. <laughs> but Surah Al Nisa, I think, is verse 131. And Allah says, But I will be in the Himna Shaitan Rajim. Walillahi mafis samawati wa mafil ard. Walillahi mafis samawati wa mafil ard. Walakad was sign al ladina utul kitaba min kablikum wa iyakum anitakullah. Anitaku Allah. Anitakullah. Wa in takfu. Why in Tafu? If you take the other way, Fa inna lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al ard. Wa kana Allahu ghaniyan hamida. He does not need us. We need him. We need his guidance. We need his sustenance. We our very existence of the entire cosmos depends on him, and he is telling us to fear him. But for me today. More importantly, for the Muslim use of Al Quran, and every Muslim use is a student of Al Quran. I make the decree also, and be conscious of Allah.